Hello and welcome back to Dreamforce 2024 from beautiful San Francisco. We're here in the NYSE's offices where we built out a studio to break in on the information that's going on, looking at the ecosystem and how it's really working together. Rob Streche, joined by Christoph Bertrand, who's a principal analyst with the Cube Research, and Craig Mestel, who is the COO, CFO, sorry, CFO of Webflow. Thanks and welcome on board. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, so I, I you know, Webflow, I've known of Webflow, uh, so I, I find it very interesting. Uh, you're the CFO. What, what has that journey been like to really be the CFO of something like, you know, Webflow? And what is Webflow up, you know, for those who don't know who Webflow is, what is Webflow about? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so uh, like I said, Craig Mistel, I'm the CFO here at Webflow. Um, prior to Webflow, I was at um, a set of technology companies that were all in high growth mode. So companies like Google, Upwork, and GitLab. And um, while, while I was there, I was in executive leadership finance positions. But um, the other thing that was unique about my background is I was also had the opportunity to be CMO for a year at, at, at GitLab. So what that does is that provides me with the insight into what our buyers here at Webflow um, uh, actually need need to do, need to know. So it really sets me up for success from that point of view. Um, I chose to come to Webflow for really three reasons. So uh, the product is is really really great. Uh, it's it's an awesome product, really easy to use. It allows uh, it's a platform that allows uh, users to design, build, and optimize their websites. Uh, and I got certified on that product. Second, uh, I believe we have a huge market opportunity to go after with our customers, and that's really exciting. And third, I think the, the company is great from a culture and people's perspective. Yeah. Well, uh, Craig, you mentioned you were a CMO, so let me uh, double click on that and ask yeah. you about the value proposition for Webflow. And uh, if you could put this in the context of the work you do with Salesforce uh, in general terms and maybe a couple of use cases. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, if your mar marketing job is actually really hard, uh, if you're a, a marketing leader today, uh, you know you have to both be left-brained and right-brained. So it's gotten very data-driven. Um, also, you need to be creative. You have to be on brand. Um, so marketers uh, today uh, have the challenge that they, you know, they need to to uh, hit their revenue numbers um, all the time because they're they're being held accountable for that. Um, and they need to do it with folks, you know, with like me, like the CFOs telling them they need to do that with, uh, with less budget. Um, from a, a pure Webflow perspective, um, marketers, they own uh, the website, which is their most important asset. So consumers today require um, these digital experiences and these online experiences to be quite, quite good and, and, and quite incredible. Um, and even if you're selling B2B or B2C, uh, you need those experiences uh, to be to be fantastic. Uh, so marketers have that challenge, um, and uh, where Webflow uh, comes into that is these marketers are really struggling today with today's technology because they can't get their websites up to date as fast as they need to do it to to hit their goals, both in terms of revenue and and brand. So. Uh, Webflow solves that problem for them. Obviously, integration with CRM, uh, lead capture. What type of businesses, what type of use cases do you serve? Are there some uh, either limitations or are there some specific use cases you prefer? Yeah, so for Webflow, it, it, we're at our best with, uh, with companies that are services companies. So they, they want to use uh, their website as that front door to educate their customers about um, what they do as a company. Um, and then, you know, from that point of view, get, you know, move them through a traditional uh, marketing funnel of, you know, awareness and consideration. Uh, so Webflow works really, really great for that. It would seem like you would tie into, because again, you're trying to bring customers through for your customers, obviously. Uh, and when you say services companies, what, what kind of size of companies or how many, how many customers do you have, that kind of stuff? How, who's like that optimal customer? Yeah, so the, the company has been around for 14 years. Uh, we have over 300,000 customers. Uh, we do really well uh, with an SMB customer, but we also do really well uh, with an enterprise or, or top end of a mid-market customer as well. Uh, so, um, you know, our product, like I said, it's a, it's a platform. Um, it, you know, it allows our, our marketing teams to really take control of their destiny in terms of being able to use our visual first platform to update their website 
um, with extreme speed. Um, you know, traditionally, uh, if you were using um, uh, you know other technology that's a little more complicated, you'd be 100% reliant on developers to to build uh, that website. Uh, and here, like I said, the marketers can can do it themselves. Visual first. It, it would expect I would expect that you know again a lot of what people look at is also understanding and really you know they're learning from you're getting a lot of community or word of mouth types of things where people are looking because it, it's a competitive market that you're in yeah. how, how do you best help them understand what your value proposition is and what you can offer versus say your competition yeah absolutely so when i look at the market um on one end you have you have website builders uh which are um, um and then the other end we have what's called digital experience platforms um, so on the website builders, uh, they're easy to use, uh, but they're, you know, they're, they're usually more rigid, uh, more templated, um, and very limited what you can do. On the other side, you have your, you know, your digital experience platforms, which are very powerful, but are overly complex to use. You usually need a lot of developers to maintain them. Uh, Webflow is the best of both wor best best of both worlds in that because uh, while we're visual first, we still have the power that you can get from some of those other capabilities. So whether that's graphics, uh, design, um, you know, um, performance, and we also provide a set of you know APIs to allow um, uh, companies to really extend their web, their web experience. So you mentioned it's uh, essentially easy to use if you're a marketer. So do you need to be certified with Salesforce or, or what type of profile of marketer do you need? Because you need somebody who's going to be savvy enough uh, to understand you know, the visual components, understand the data piece as well. Uh, how does that all work out? And, and by the way, does that give uh, these marketing organizations an operational efficiency advantage? So it does, and um, we actually have a really large community of users. Um, so we have a community over 150 countries, uh, people who are certified on our on our on our Webflow platform, um, and marketing teams can also leverage a set of service providers and agencies, uh, marketing agencies that are certified and and do really really well in terms of the build, design, and optimization of websites. So. Uh, we have a large community. Uh, it really sets us up for success, and it's something that's really exciting about Webflow. It would it would seem that this also, to kind of what Christoph was saying, would help from a, uh, you know, those people who, like you you talked about, you know, competition is some, some of it's DIY and building it all, uh, all this infrastructure out yourself. But it would seem that, like you said, that API layer really simplifies how organizations are going to connect things like Salesforce and other products that they may be using. Is that a big advantage you see to your customers is getting them up and running faster? Yeah, it, it is. Um, so some of our customers will just use the visual capabilities within within the website platform. But um, for those who want to have the extensibility, we do have um, what we call our composable CMS, which is the core of our platform. And we have a set of APIs that people can use to go and access that data and information. Um, so, and like I said, we have other APIs within our, our full platform where you know companies like Salesforce, we can have the, the, the uh, CRM interlock. How much uh, do you do with Gen AI? Because you probably have to talk about AI. What an interview without AI, huh? <laughs> we, we got almost all the way through it without asking. I know so, you I mean, almost we, we did, did ask. We did pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, AI is is a critical part to our, our company strategy, and uh, we have our um, upcoming uh, Webflow conference on October fifteenth, uh, where we're going to be making some um, announcements um, about about our AI strategy. Um, since I'm the CFO, not the CMO, <laughs> though I could put I could put my hat on and flip that. Yeah. Uh, I'll let them. I'll let the, the market, our marketing team, uh, you, make make those exciting announcements at, at the Webflow conference. I say you're going to get kicked under the table next. Oh, uh, I can't. Like, you know, something like that if you, <laughs> if you did went down. But we, no, I think again, it's like when you start to look at all of the exciting people who are here. I mean, this, this is a, Dreamforce is a massive developer conference. It would seem that you, you help bridge that. And a lot of Salesforce's message to developers is simplicity. Do you find that that resonates with the Salesforce, the people who are here for Salesforce as well? I do. So um, I, I, I talked a lot about the fact that you know, historically websites have been 100% driven by web developers. Um, web developers actually love 
web and web flow comes into their organization. And the, the reason is, is because they get to work on the things that they love to do. So they get to do the growth hacking, working on integrations, playing with APIs, doing all that fun stuff. And the things that they don't like to do, such as like updating content, changing fonts, they can leave that to you know the, the marketing teams with, with when you have a platform like Webflow in place. And oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, so you, you're mentioning developers again now. So again, is that profile of the perfect user somebody who's halfway between a developer and a marketer, or is is there some sort of, of uh, training maybe you provide uh, for a marketer to get into more of the the data structure and construct you really need to understand? Not the APIs necessarily, but understanding what to use, how to use it. Yeah, so um, you know, our mission is to, to bring web superpowers to everyone. That, that, that's, that's the mission of Webflow. And uh, that means everyone. So uh, you know, that includes the, a marketer who you know, can use the visual uh, experience to do that. Um, it also means developers where they want to, to, to play and, and you know, plug and play and work with, with, our, with our platform. Um, we do provide training. We have a great uh, you know, uh, Webflow University program, which is all available on our website and things like that. So we do have all of those things. Uh, and we have a certification program, so we have all that to really train, train our users. I, one of the things that uh, I, I think is really key to marketing, and you would know with your previous CMO hat on, was <laughs> that content is very dynamic. Uh, how, do, how do you aid people with that? Because you know, it's not just throwing up a static website and, you know, I was building websites in the 90s, and I remember hacking, you know, the HTML together and what a, you know, oh my God, going back and changing it out. How do you help people when they have very dynamic content that they want to deal with? Is that a big piece of what where Webflow, I mean, it has the word flow in it, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking maybe there might be something there. Yeah, the number one value proposition for, for Webflow's platform is speed. Um, and uh, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, but at the core is our content management system or CMS. So for dynamic content, uh, we have a visual first CMS. Also, I said there's APIs in there as well, but you can really bring uh, content into your website and, and keep it up to date, keep it fresh. And uh, it allows you to move really, really, Webflow just helps, uh, you know, whether you know, whether you're a marketing team, a web development team, you can move really, really fast by using Webflow for your website. So I'd like to talk to the CFO for a second, talk about compliance and governance. Uh, obviously, you will be doing more around AI, maybe Gen AI, et cetera. Yep. But let's talk about where you're, you're at now with manipulation of data. How do you ensure that the data that you leverage uh, on your website and or in your interactions with uh, customers based on uh, the, the platform, mm -hmm. that those interactions are actually compliant? Yeah. So. Uh, you know, some of the compliance things to think about, you know, as a company, we're, we're SOC 2 compliant, uh, you know, we, we comply with GDPR and things like that. The other thing um, within our enterprise capabilities, our enterprise uh, uh, products, is we have a set of controls and governance, uh, audit trail, those type of things that allow, um, you know, this flexibility of visual design. You, you know, it, there's a lot of protection as well to ensure that all those changes that are made with such speed are done in a, in a in what I'd say is a controlled a controlled way, um, so yeah I, I think that uh, you know we're, we're we're we have really good you know privacy program really 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 good compliance program as as part of it and I think we give a lot of power to our customers. Now you, you have a, a lot of customers I mean not 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 a little customers. So yeah, a lot of customers. When, yeah. when you look at it, yeah, are you? Uh, around the world, all over the place. How, where, where is there a concentration of those customers, or is it just all over the place, different languages, and all of that? Yeah, so we're, we have customers all over the world. Um, you know, in, in over 150 uh, countries, like I said, and um, and uh, you know, they're all uh, there. We have a product that's called Localization, which allows people to localize websites, uh, which is uh, also really, really important. Yeah, no, big, huge. And you mentioned agencies, so they are your channel, essentially. Correct. Yeah, they, they play a big part in our business. Uh, we have a, uh, we you know we have a, we have a great set of them who are we have over a thousand in our actual certified partner program, and uh, we actually just launched a new partner program, which is very exciting. Uh, and uh, you know we're looking to to add more and more folks who want to build for Webflow. Well, I, I think that that is a great place to leave this, Greg. I really appreciate you coming on board and really diving into this. It's been great. So, you know, 
let's uh, do this again sometime. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. I had a lot of fun. It was, it was really, I'm really excited yep. to work with y'all. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching this episode of Dreamforce 2024. We're unpacking it from the NYSE's beautiful studio that we've built out here. Stay tuned for more with us this week.